Server with Antox CDL. Is in the house. In the house. Anyways, so today, believe it or not, we've got a young... Uh, an, young aspiring an aspiring truck driver. An aspiring trucker. Yeah. She wants to come on the show. She wrote to us, and so we're going to have her on for a little while, and we'll see where that goes. And first, real quick, let's just plug our sponsors, National Carriers. Phone number is 888-311-7076. If you're in the market for a new job... Call National Carriers. They actually take on students, solos, teams, lease per or lease drivers, and company drivers. Call them today. They got all kind of regional work. Again, the number is 888-311-7076. Ruth Ann. JJ Keller, it's the trucker secretary, my coin there. And they will help you with everything that you need to do when it comes to starting your business, keeping your paperwork in order. And any questions you have on anything else that you need to do, they will have that answer. Their number is 888-601-2017. Call J.J. Keller. I promise you will want to marry them. Anyways, Ruthann, today's show is going to be all about our young lady. Her name is Miss Eugenia from the great state of New Jersey. Jersey. So anyway, so we're going to give her a call and we'll connect her right now. Hello. Hello, is this Eugenia? It is. Hi, this is Ruth Ann and Troy from Talk CDL. How are you? I'm lovely. I was just listening to your podcast when Johnny Acid got stuck in the snow. <laughs> Good old Johnny. <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> <laughs> we left him there? All right. Yeah. So, Miss Eugenia, you recently wrote into the show and you wanted to talk about a past subject. I guess it was... Uh, trucking emergencies? Yes. So what do you what do you got for us? Well, um, I think it was regarding emergencies such as fires and you had mentioned something about protocol for not protocol, but like an accident that happened with hazard material. Oh, it was the one with that the truck driver got shot at. Okay. And we were discussing, you and Ruth Ann were arguing whether or not a bullet could cause a diesel fuel tank to explode. Uh, yeah, we were arguing that. So <laughs> do, do you have the actual? I do. Let's I do it. have the answer for you. That's here. I called, I called a bunch of fire department buddies because I was on the fire department. And I didn't have the answer. Called around. It cannot unless it is hot. A higher caliber than a nine millimeter and a higher diameter and a thicker grain, well, more grain than a, the biggest nine millimeter, it will not explode. So, if it's bigger if than you, a nine millimeter, though, it will explode it. Like my if you put point. a 50 BMG to that tank, you're going to lose that whole truck, yes. Okay. <laughs> See? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it so, <laughs> it, can, it can happen if you, if you have what it takes. You need yes, it ha you have to hit it the right angle, and there's a bunch of things that go into perspective. Okay, so I mean, you know, it's almost like a a diesel, the old diesel vehicles. In order to get fire, you had to have the right combustion. They had those glow plugs, if you remember. Even the cars, yeah, yeah it's, it's and they had to have a certain amount of heat to be able to get it going. It 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 takes more heat to make a uh, something that runs on diesel fire versus gasoline you know you just have to look at gasoline and it, and it blows yeah right, that's pretty cool we well, had so. somebody with a cdl last january park his truck it was a one of those construction trucks you see the yard guy driving and left it on idle which is illegal to do in new jersey didn't put the e-brake on it went barreling down the hill went airborne and ended up in my aunt's living room well, nice. That 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 was yeah, probably a uh, surprise. It well, she text she texted us going, "We're not having dinner here tonight." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was nobody called nine one one either. I called the non emergency number and I was like, "You guys are aware of this issue?" And they're like, "Nope, we're sending everyone." I was like, "You better send them quick." Wow. <laughs> so so Eugenia, you are. You live, let's, let's start, let's talk about you for a second since you're okay. on the show today. So you are a 
a uh, a New Jerseyan, right? You live in New Jersey, is that correct? I hate it. Don't even I don't even go there. <laughs> well, I mean, I was going to bring that up. Ruth Ann's <laughs> over here laughing, but if you know, when you talk to truck drivers anywhere in the country, 99% of them will tell you that the place they hate to go is New Jersey and New York. It's like the mm-hmm. least the least favorite states there is to truck to truck in. Well, let me tell you, the company I'm looking at, which is Wilson's Logistics out in Missouri, that's where the class would be held for a CDO. They do not travel in New York City because it's too risky to try to get those trucks around. Yeah. Yeah. New York City's like the absolutely has the big Mr. Yuck sign on it for every trucking company. Um, that's cool. So, so you are, did you start school yet? You don't have your class A CDL yet, right? No, I just started studying. Okay, cool. How, how old are you, Eugenia? I am 23. They asked me how old I was, and I, you know, that's sad. I had to Google that this year. Someone threw me a loop. I was very hungover, and at work, I'll give you that. Okay. That's that's usually not and, a good combination. <laughs> yeah, especially when you become a trucker. You don't want to ever say well, that. Well, I'm at work well, and I'm hungover. <laughs> let, let me clarify something. When I become a truck, I, I've gotten better about drinking, and I'm usually now to the point that I'll just have one beer with dinner if I want a beer because, you know, the alcohol limit is 0.4. If you go over that, you're screwed. Ruthann, I like this girl. <laughs> she she likes to get it all out on the yeah. out on the table. It's all right there I, with her Budweiser. I had to pull over at a truck stop to try to compose myself as you guys were talking with Johnny Acid multiple times. Okay. So now I don't listen to you guys while I'm driving down 78. Okay. So some people do that same thing. Yeah. Oh, so so you live in you must live in like northern Jersey if you're running 78, right? Mid Jersey, northern Jersey. Morris County. Yeah. yeah sure. We used I to got run last there. not last Monday, the Monday before last Monday, I got stuck in that rainstorm. Mm-hmm. So Eugenia, when's the last time you had a drink? Honestly, yeah. yesterday. Yes. Okay. So you haven't had anything today? Nope. Okay. That's I think cool. I can't get drunk because then they're gonna think I'm crazy. Are, are you Are you <laughs> Irish? Are you Irish by chance? I'm Russian. Okay, because Irish. You know, if you were Irish, I, they say Irish people can't get drunk. But Russians, well, Russians are pretty me, close it to there. Though, me two say. 24 ounces of twisted tea, and I I can't drive. I was going to say, Russians generally can can handle their their alcohol. Yeah, they have. The Russians are famous for their vodka. 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 Yeah. So Don't what's... ever mix it with twisted tea. I did that. It was a bad night. Vodka and twisted tea? <laughs> yeah, that's probably yeah. it. Sa- it sounded good in the moment. <laughs> but, but now you do know when you get your class A CDL, you can't, you don't even want to have any alcohol in the truck. You don't want to have any on your breath ever. You, you understand that, right? Oh, no, I know, and that's why I'm enjoying it while I can. So uh, j- just I'm going to give you some little, a little bit of advice. When, when you become a trucker, that CDL that's in your pocket, is yeah. li- it's like a, it really is like a degree. I mean, it's, it's gonna, it will make you money the rest of your life as long as you stay clean, don't get into a lot of accidents, try not to be a job hopper, and stay obvi- moving. obviously don't, don't drink and drive. So Yeah. Yeah, let me ask you. Sure. What is so Wilson's Logistics offers a CDL class. You, they'll fly. They'll reimburse you for your flight out there. They'll they cover housing. They cover lunch. You're just in charge of breakfast and dinner, and it's pretty. You know, it's like a five star thing if you ask me. They get you a rental car from the airport so you can get to where you're staying. Yeah. Well, let, um, me, let me ask you this. How long is yeah. the contract you have to sign with them? I have to ask them that. If I, st- I it's a, The class is, sorry, I'm going to put this out here. They can yell at me later if they want. Uh, $3,950, and I have to stay with them for a year, or I have to pay them back is what I'm understanding. That's not a bad That's price. That's the contract. The contract is you staying with them for the year. And that fulfills that that agreement of the four thousand for the schooling, and then right. you know once you're once you're done with that contract at one year, then you can legally leave 
without any repercussions from the company bad mouthing you. And a lot of companies also, when you do leave and go somewhere else and you have an open contract, some of them actually will threaten to sue the new company, I believe, for for taking one of their employees while they're under contract like that. So it's always good to, I know some companies are just horrible to work for after so long, but it's always good to just stick out what you've, what you committed to. If you don't then just pay them and fulfill that contract, but make sure when you're done that you get a copy of that stating that it was fulfilled. Yeah. If, 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 if I couldn't give you any piece of advice except for what Ruthann just ended with many student drivers, and I'm going to tell you, CR England, CRST, a um, lot your your big giant companies. When these guys get done training, they they fail to give them a copy of their certificate showing that they were done training. That they or, fulfilled or, it. Or at least here's here's really what it comes down to. What they fail to give them is a copy of the contract because when they know that a trucking company can hire you if they see that you were you had completed the training part of it so they try to keep the contract of of you know the contract that you're going to sign with when you go in there it's it's and then once you're done the training part then you sign another contract as an employee so you're not actually an employee till you complete the training, and this is where they get a lot of these guys. Over the years, I've talked to drivers, and I'm and, and you have to ask them, do you have a copy of your contract? You know, the, not the contract that you signed before you go in. Not the contract the, that you right, signed. Not the first beginning one. Beginning schooling, because your training doesn't, your, your actual employment doesn't start that one year until you finish your schooling and they hire you at that point. Right. Once so you, that could be three months. Once you sign the second contract as an employee, that's proof that you completed schooling. <laughs> so, And they try to avoid giving you that. So if I was you... Make sure when you get done, hey, right there, when you get done with your trainer, ask them, hey, I need a copy of my contract. I want everything done. Because believe it or not, we've talked to lawyers about this. Whatever you sign in your life, you have a, a legal right to a copy of it. It doesn't matter if you sign a, a, a sign something for a bank, you sign for a house, for a car. You always have a legal right to have whatever your signature is on, and that's where they cannot refuse to give you that. Uh, and But once you forget about it, and then a month later you try to talk to safety, they give you the runaround game with most they companies. Do. I don't do. know Wilson. I couldn't yeah. tell you whether Wilson's good or bad. I don't know a lot about them, so I can't say that they would do that. All I would tell you is you have a legal right to, to those contracts that so, you're going to sign. So before you go, now, before you go to, to them, get a three ring binder and get those those plastic sleeves, and then just set it up to a, every time you sign something, or they give you a copy of what your pay is going to be, how many hours you're doing all the contracts that you sign, just slide it right in those sleeves. Just tell them when you're done signing everything, say, I want a copy of every single thing. And they can walk to the copy machine and copy it. Don't leave the office until then, because then that's where they start going and giving you the runaround Troy was mentioning. But keep it in a binder. That way you always have everything right there. Now, let me ask you guys, I, before I call them and one of your fancy sponsors, does J.J. Keller do company involved drivers? No, it's only owner op. Yeah, they work with ma- mainly owner operators, but they probably can direct you correctly. If you call JJ Keller, they are experts with trucking. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell them you guys sent me too. Yeah. That would be yeah, wonderful. My organization skills suck. So <laughs> having someone with all those legal documents who has me covered and has them all somewhere in a safe location, it's good. Well, what, one thing that J.J. Keller would be really good about would be directing you in every way that you need to be. Yeah. So, so here's something else that I would, I would uh, tell you in, in advice since you're going to become a, a, a trucker. Go into this mentally prepared to be gone for weeks at a time. Get, get your mind really ready for this because it's a little sticker shock or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> when you wake up for the first time and you're, there's a, 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 you're in a bunk in a tractor trailer, you know, at a truck stop and the, you can hear the turbo whistling and you you're literally can hear the motor purring. 
uh, it's it's a little weird at first because you your you know your favorite pizza place is usually a thousand miles away. You're I don't know if you have a dog. He's at home. If it's you an have orientation a, that you have to get accustomed to. Yeah, everything you know is not going to your whole entire life, which is cool because when I became a trucker, I was looking forward to just getting out there. He and likes to go bye bye. I love going bye bye, and and there I was, you know, mentally ready for this, and so it didn't kill me. But three out of four truck drivers. Get their CDL and don't la- they don't last six months and they never truck again. So keep yourself mentally prepared. And like Ruth Ann said, be prepared to fulfill your contract because if you stick it out with Wilson or whoever you go with your for your first year, what was that company's name? Marvin Keller, Ruth Ann, that we uh, did a couple commercials for. They do that too. They're in Ohio. They're a really nice company. I would recommend them. But again, you know, go with Wilson if that's who you want to go with. But you know, just be mentally prepared to finish your contract. And let me tell you something. Your first year as a rookie driver, you get jerked around a lot. You really do. You're not going to make as much money as everybody else. In fact, you're going to hear people in the truck stop saying, girl, you should be making triple that crap. But but the bottom line is you got to put your first year in. And if you job hop like some of these other guys because they think the grass is greener, you'll never see the really, really glory job. I promise you that. So taking advice when, when you got truck drivers, and I love truckers. I'm a trucker. But when they want to give you advice, you know what? I would ask them about their resume. <laughs> you know, because if you're, if you're listening to some dumbass that had 10 jobs in the last year give you advice, you're already going into a black hole. I'm just telling you, it's, it's, it's insane. Get around good, experienced drivers that know what they're talking about. Watch the guys with the big mouths. That's some more advice, Ruthann. You want to say something? Uh, yeah, you want to make sure that you not only fulfill that contract, but if it's something that you truly want to do, don't take any long periods of time off because a lot of the, the companies have a lot of regulations where you have to dr- drive so many months or years within the last so much period of time, three years or five years. So you want to make sure that if you fulfill that first year and then you're like, okay, I went over the road, I'm going to go ahead and look for somewhere else or something came up where you decided to take a few months off changing Make sure you don't take it long because we've seen a lot of drivers go and get their get their license or and and, and get that time frame in and then the next thing you know they go home, take something local for the last few years and everything that they did was basically gone because they didn't do over the road because over the road's what the companies look for. Now let me ask you this. Is it some of my friends who aren't truckers, don't have CDLs, don't know really what they're talking about? Say, go to the community college, do their CDO class. Here's the thing. I don't mind that, but then I'm learning on a vehicle that isn't the trucking company I have my eyes set on. Uh, and then... Not necessarily. Yeah. What's your thought? Well, l- let, me, let me chime in for a second, Ruthann. Honestly, th- here's what you really want to look for. You want to look for what's called a PTDI school, a Professional Truck Driving Institute, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a college or if it's a trucking company. There's advantages to doing it both ways. Number one, okay, you want something with, I think, a minimum of 160 hours. If you're not getting 160 hours, a lot of companies can't hire you for their training. Some will go down to 120, but you really want to hit that 160-hour mark as far as what you're being trained on with the, the school, now, let me, before you chime in, Ruth Ann, let me just say the advantages to both. The advantage to going to the college, if they're giving you 160 hours, okay, number one, what was that noise? That was me, sorry. The cop in my town is making me move. Sorry. Oh, what's wrong with that cop? Put him on the air. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a really nice cop. He We like to bullshit a lot, but he's like, I need you to move out of my watch spot. I was like. So the advantage to the college is when you get done your your CDL, when you graduate there, you can go anywhere you want. The disadvantage to going to a trucking company is you're locked in, you know, to that company. Now, if that could be a good thing and a bad thing both ways, Um, I would, I mean, personally, I would rather get my CDL through a school that I pay for and you can get grants and all that other stuff. And then I can choose who I want to work for versus, you know, signing a contract. And if I end up hating that place, I'm stuck there. 
Every company will hire you. Well, not every, but most companies will hire you as a student. That won't make any difference. The downfall of going with a company that offers the schooling is five months in the down while you're still, quote, underneath them. You're done the training part. You're now an employee under contract. Your pay rate generally is not as much as the other person that started a company with five months experience, yeah, brand new. That's true. And now, with sorry to interrupt, but that's fine. with uh, trucking companies, if I were to do it out in New Jersey, and I and I were to call Wilson, my recruiter, lovely name of Axel, um, really nice guy. If I were to call him and say, "Hey, I got my CDL out here in New Jersey." got my class A, got all this, that, and the other done. Do I train under them for X amount of months or what? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Any company is going to make you train for X amount of months. It's, it's what, um, six weeks? Well, the, no, not really. No, not Eight six weeks. weeks. Depends no. on, it's, on it's, the it's, company it's, policy. It's like 7,000 miles, seven, 70, usually probably two to three weeks these days. Honestly, the, the training periods at most trucking companies very, very quick. Um, uh, you know, there was something I wanted to say uh, on what you were talking about here. Oh, I wanted to ask you, what is, I mean, here we are, it's what, uh, October of 2021. I want to make sure I put the date on there only because I want to ask her a question that's significant to if we're still alive and doing this podcast in five years. Um, what is Wilson going to start you off with once you are done the training? How much are they going to pay you per mile as a student? Hold on to that question because I'm about to pull into the Lowe's parking lot and tell them that they can frog off because I'm going to sit in their lot and hey, have this talk. She uses my terminology. For mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I thought I'd be nice because then you don't have to censor stuff. Yeah. Editing likes well, doing I, that. I, <laughs> I use the word frog. Shut the that's, front door. That's where I got it. <laughs> that's where she got it. Yeah. yeah. Me, me and acid. Okay, so you're you're in Lowe's. No, I'm at a stoplight looking at my email. Okay. Yeah. Thirty thousand. Hold on. Paid. Uh, wh- let me get through this light and then we'll, I'll read you the email. So. so. Hold on. That's I think okay. My light's fine. Take, yeah. take so, your time because I don't want to hear an accident oh, happen. All right, so well, <laughs> <laughs> while we wait for the ac- for an accident not to happen. Have, we haven't had our first official wreck on the show. No, we haven't. So I mean, we've had some we wrecks. We really don't want that. We've, <laughs> all right. we've wrecked the show, but we've not had anybody get into an accident while they were talking to us on the show. And we do have I'm some sure people. acid has gotten close. Yeah. Um. Well, I did while well, we let me drive up this little tiny hill and park. I have a Kenworth W900 horn installed in my little Toyota RAV4, and it's quite funny when I honk at somebody and they expect to see this let's, giant let's tractor he, Let's trailer. hear your W900 horn. Oh. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and, and you're in a little RAV? <laughs> RAV4. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of cute. Now, when I when I put had someone put it in, it was a sixty dollar aftermarket horn that went into a nine hundred and seventy dollar repair job because they messed up something and it killed the alternator and the battery. You know why I like this girl? Hmm. Because just listening to her talk, I could tell she's a trucker. She's she's got the blood. She's got the heart. I can tell. Yeah. Well, my mom is like, well, what are you gonna do if some family emergency happens and i was like well you know troy and ruthann said if you're out on the road and you really can't get home unless it's a diehard emergency that you know you know someone is actually injured you're not going anywhere yeah you can't really do anything exactly you know my grandfather She's like, well, what if the dog dies that's like well bury you're him. gonna cremate him anyways yeah stuff him Tell her to <laughs> tell her to stuff Rover, and then you'll at least be able to see him when you get home. My grandfather w- used to take me when I was a kid down to Florida for um, spring training, and he would always say to my grandmother before we left, he'd say, "Hazel, unless he said he he actually would say, absolutely don't call me for any emergency at all." He he would literally say that. he'd say because there's nothing I can do about it. He said even if somebody dies, what can I do about it? Nothing I can do. 
and I'll I'll know about it when I get back. <laughs> we were only gone like three weeks, so. And they had no cell phones then, so. Yeah. You know. So, but anyway, so. Well, my mom's like, who's going to help me with this? And who's going to, I was like, there's an app called Next Door. You should get involved in it. <laughs> yeah. So, so Eugenia, what, did you get parked yet? Can you tell me what the pay oh, yeah, is? Oh, sorry. What's I got Will- parked in. Well, and what are these people called? Wilson? I know I've heard of them. What are they? Wilson Transportation Wilson, Trucking? Uh, logistics. And where, Springfield, where's, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. Okay, cool. Pull them up, Ruthann. See how many trucks they have. Wilson Logistics. Pull, they just got the new 2020 Peterbilt. Pull up the DOT number. Well, that's a good reason to go there. That's why I wanted to go there. So what, what kind of honest. what kind of peak did they got? A five seventy nine or a three eighty nine? Uh, hold on, let me go to. Well, Facebook I want to know. I, I want to know what the pay is. How mu- how much are they going to start Eugenia off? As is is it a mileage rate? Is it percentage? How are they paying? I think it's per mile. Hold on. In a nutshell, paid on the jobs. I'll just read this whole paragraph. No, I won't actually. You do, do you mind if I read the whole paragraph? If it's a paragraph, that's fine. Paid on the job, CDL training at no cost to you. Real hands-on training on the road. You will be paid, in all caps, paid in all caps, to explore our great country while learning everything there is to know about truck driving. Your trainer will be a professional who will who had to go through his own training just to train you. After training, you will have the position have a position with the company with the same pay as our experienced drivers exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point they don't say how much yet no cost to you whatsoever so as long as you commit to a year to a year working for us I, and again i think if if i remember correctly most trucking companies are paying anywhere from 42 to 50 cents a mile i think Ruthann, for their students right now. So, and as long as you're falling in in that range, and I know a company right now, fifty four cents a mile. Oh, so they're going to start you out at fifty four cents a mile as a student. Yep. That's good. That's that's actually that's respectable. I will say that. I, hey, Wilson's getting a lot of plugs here on the show today. Well, I'm looking at their 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 website first, and their main terminal. Well, their terminals are in Montana. Washington, Oregon, and Missouri, Washington, Texas, and then Missouri is is I'm going to assume their home base. Mm-hmm. So what's the deal on them? How many trucks? Well, I had to go oh, see where they were. Safer. Well, I had to pull up where. Okay, so anyways, li- listen, I I will tell you, at fifty four cents a mile in today's market for a student. Okay, I know some guys out there going, I don't drive my truck more than sixty five cents. But but literally, fifty four cents is respectable for a student. I mean, for real, it really is. I would I would tell you one hundred percent that's respectable pay as a student driver if that's what they're going to oh, pay you. A little over a thousand tractors. I'm trying to find okay. what type of Peterbilt. It's eh. the Peterbilt five seven five seventy nine Ultra Loft. Yeah, it's I a mean, double bunker. And, and you know, here's the thing. You know, I, I mean this sincerely. I could tell that you got some. Yeah, Ruth Ann just held up there. Oh, you know what? I know who they are. I I uh I had a uh, a video that we made, and they had a uh, um one of their their trucks. They turned it into a pontoon boat. The one of the the cab shells is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I know who they are. Um, but anyways, that sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't again. I don't know enough to say. Hey, I think it's a good company or not. I really don't. But fifty four is respectable. And and I'll tell you something else that I thought was respectable. Four thousand bucks to get your CDL. That's cheap. That's actually cheap in today's market. So if that's all you're paying total back, and you know you got to get you got to uh, sign a contract with them, unless you see the disadvantage of going to the college is you got to come up with all the money yourself right away. If you don't have, you know, whatever the college is is charging you, then obviously it would it would obviously you're not going to have to go the other route, and that's go through a trucking company. Um, my personal belief though, is if you can get the CDL without being locked in anywhere, that's the, that's the number one way to go. The number two way to go would be find the best company that's willing to train you. And it sounds like they're not too bad, Ruth Ann. I don't think that sounds bad compared to a lot of the. No, it sounds like it's actually yeah. respectable. Yeah. I, 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 I really do. I think that I, I, I give my blessing. Does, <laughs> and it, does here, it mean and anything? Here's the, here's the cool part. In your first week on the road, 
before you like pre on the road training where you're going out with a trainer before you're counting your miles actually starts, you get $200 a week for food. Oh, cool. You know, Ruthanne, it's funny. We were talking about alcohol earlier. <laughs> I, think, I think it was Alan on, on the show. This was like three, four years ago when he got his CDL. Remember, do you remember Alan? We followed him all the way through his school and he would check in with us every, you know, every week, a couple times. A, that's when we did the podcast live five days a week. Remember that? Yeah. And, um, it's exhausting. It was exhausting. <laughs> anyway, so he had told me on graduation. Okay. And this was a Schneider. He said, this guy, they all graduated. Right. And this guy goes into his truck, his assigned truck and he pulls out a six pack on their property and hands it out to all the drivers and says, "Let's have a toast together." Immediately was fired. I mean, well, yeah, if you think about it. I mean, how how ridiculous was that? But that's a true story. Yeah, that's a true story. So uh, I would again. I I think it doesn't sound like you're going down a bad road there. I really, I mean, mean that sincerely. I mean, it, I don't think you could get it hurt on that deal. Uh, the only, the only thing is you're locked in for a year, but again, I would tell anybody that is cautious about being locked in for a year of trucking with somebody. It's your, in your first year. You got to have the stamina. If you don't have the skin, the thick skin to be a trucker to begin with, it's going to show your first year. And, you know, a lot of guys get in with their first company and they think that it's, they're not making enough. They hear the other stories or they're not getting home enough and they're they're whining, blah, 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 and they blame the company. A lot of guys blame the company when it's really not the company. It's really within themselves. So, you know, you got to put a year in somewhere. Why not Wilson, I guess? You know, what do you think, Ruthanne? Yeah. Well, I... I the only thing that, that they're everything that they have is far west, except for Missouri and Texas. So, you know, if you're someone that wants to be home, you know, a little bit more, I would just watch what their home time say, and that's it. Hey, Eugenia, when 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 I was a young driver, I lived in Pennsylvania, which is your neighboring state. Okay, and what part of Pennsylvania? I have to ask. Uh, well, you know where Allentown is, right? Yeah. Okay, so maybe 30, 40 miles west up in Schuylkill County, up in the up in the Cull Hills is where I was. Okay. I was actually raised so, up there in the mountains, the, the little So mountains. you know where Johnstown and Stoystown is? Yeah, that's on the west side of PA, though, Johnstown. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyways, what I was going to tell you is my first year, my first couple years, all I ran was mainly Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, up to New England. I just ran around those areas, right? And I remember right. truck drivers saying to me, man, I freaking hate the Northeast. The place sucks. And it, it's all I would hear from other truckers on the CB and the truck stops. Oh, my gosh, I hate coming up here. And I used to say to them, why? What the hell? I mean, I mean, I, I loved it because I was from the area. And then one day I got to go out west and I'm like, oh, this is why they hate the Northeast. It's like, you know, more open road and blah, blah, blah. My uh, more advice I would give you is don't. Don't start hating the Northeast, you know, like a lot of guys do. It's it's really not that bad trucking in the Northeast. People whine about it, but it's really not as bad as they like to say. I promise. You're born and raised there. I promise you, you'll be fine. Well, no, not really. You're not. Right. Where are you from? No, I was the first four years of my life, I was down in Texas. And then I came to New Jersey. And here's why I, if I don't have to drive a tractor trailer in New Jersey, I, if, if Bob tells a different story. Tractor trailer in New Jersey, I will not. You see people going down 287 and going, oh, I just passed the trucker's bumper. I'm going to cross over. Well, now that trucker can't see you. So if you slam on your brakes, he's going to hit you. Eugenia, there's jackass drivers in every state. And I promise you, you're going to, as a trucker, you're going to have people cutting you off in every state. That's, that's watch not our gonna, videos. Yeah, watch, watch the talk CEL videos. So you'll, you'll see all <laughs> kind of crazy stuff. But no, seriously, you're not going to get away. You're just used to New Jersey because, and believe me, we understand New Jersey. It's, you know, I think we, what do we used to call New Jersey? The garbage can for New York? New York's garbage can. <laughs> but but I'm serious. New Jersey, they got some crazy drivers. But if you've been to Massachusetts, they're nuts. Ohio. Ohio's insane. Atlanta, uh, Rufus was just complaining about Atlanta the other day. I mean, it really, Tampa, you get down to Tampa, I-4 is the number one interstate from Tampa to uh, Daytona. 
it is the number one death per mile on the on an interstate. So it's it's hard to get away from bad four wheelers, no matter where you go. I would get that out of my head right away. Forty eight states is really the way you want to go. Uh, you know, for at least your first year or two. All right. So well, I'll keep that in mind. Well, listen, Eugenia, it's been great having you on. Yeah, you can come back anytime you want to. Ruth, do you, I will. Do you mind if Eugenia comes back on with us? No, I'd like to know, you know, how I her school is going. I do have to ask you guys. What do you want to ask us? So, with Wilson, you occasionally get told you're leaving a trailer at a customer site and bobtailing home. I am in, so I'm one of those people that pre plans for X, Y, and Z, this case where I'm going to keep the bobtail. So I'm waiting for a call back from my local police department because they all love me because I'm just a big goof. And to park my bobtail in their back property because they have cameras there. What's safer than parking it at a police station? What other locations do you guys, like, would you consider a safe location? Because I live on my, the issue is I can't park it in the driveway because it's got a, basically a, 180 bump in the beginning and it's not probably the safest way to put a bobcat into a driveway <laughs> a bobtail so i mean in all sincerity i would <laughs> most trucking companies don't allow you to break the truck and trailer when you're home but i guess i guess wilson must have a customer near you to be able to do that but i don't know i mean a truck stop is probably the best place to leave a bobtail um uh we used a restaurant the one time, you know, like sometimes, especially up north, they have restaurants that have big parking areas near them. Yeah, one of the things so about... So some of them, uh, you can park there, and a lot of companies, you know, wouldn't have as much problem as long as there's lighting. One of the things about New Jersey, and I do remember this when I used to work with Schaefer Trucking, um, literally... We would talk to drivers in New Jersey, and none of them had a place to park. It was like every one of them were like, do you have a customer I can park at? Do you have a customer I can park at? So truth be known, um, New Jersey, that is one of the downfalls. If you live in New Jersey, finding a place to park. Normally, from what I'm understanding in New Jersey, it's more paid parking. But if, you have a, if you're making the money and you're paying, like, say, 100 bucks a month, sometimes a company will actually pick up that tab um, but if not, it'll be a write-off taxes. Right. Well, the other thing I was going to say is normally they're fenced in and they have like a watchman. So that's another good advantage to, you know, doing that. But then again, the watchman's probably getting minimum wage and it's not the best. But at least it's a, a secured yard. So I would say yeah. look for that, you know, just depending on what you're going to be making. It really is. I don't know if you're planning on becoming an owner someday, a lease driver, you know, and trying to really up the pay. So anyways. Well, I'm definitely getting a CB the first second I actually get on the road myself. See, I told you I like this girl. Yeah, yeah. that's a very smart decision. Yeah, very smart decision. And don't let anybody tell you it's a dinosaur. It's the best tool in your truck, trust me. So They are the best things. I've ridden in a fire truck with one, and they are the best things. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> well, listen, we, we had a lot of fun with you, Eugenia. Come back again and, and, and hang out with us. We really did enjoy it. And, and in fact, like Ruth Ann said, you know, check in with us every now and then and we will we will uh follow your career at least we'll see how you're doing if you're going to be going to wilson or if you're going to do the college give us a call let us know which way you're going let us know when you're starting and uh, let us know how it's working out how much you like it you know and the, the other important thing is the other advice i would have give you is and i think you're already going to be there with this one is have fun enjoy your job if you enjoy something then you really become good at it you know, I, I met drivers that don't make it because they were really thinking they were just going to get a job where they're making money. And trucking is not a job. It's a lifestyle. It's 100% a lifestyle. And one last piece of advice I'm going to give you, at which today is the last piece of advice. Because mm -hmm. um, I actually have something then too. Okay. The, the last piece of advice I would give you is you're the captain of the ship. When you become the driver, don't let anybody talk you into driving when you're tired. Don't let anybody talk you into driving when you feel unsafe. Don't and don't ever try to keep up with another driver that you're BSing with the C on the C B traveling if they're going too fast on curvy roads, whatever the case is, to where you feel uncomfortable. Don't let anybody talk you into doing anything. And don't ever let any dispatcher or anybody 
tell you you have to deliver a load or you're fired because if you're tired or you're in a storm and you said you, in your mind, you're like, man, I feel like I'm going to wreck, pull it over. Always remember, you are the captain of your ship. I promise you that because nobody's going to stand up in court and tell you, uh, and, and, and like, for example, your dispatcher is never going to come to court and go, yeah, we made her do it. We made her, we made her drive when she was tired or over on her hours or whatever the case is. So remember, you're the captain of the ship you're driving. Ruth Ann, what do you got? Um, because you do not want to waste a ton of money in truck stops for food and at, the rip offs. Well, it's not just that; it's extremely unhealthy. And you know, when when you start driving and you start getting into that habit, and you're just sitting there, and you're not used to usually being a person that sits around, you you get extremely unhealthy, and you don't want to get in that habit. So. Start going and planning what you're going to be like. You can start looking at different meal plans and you can start looking at different ways to cook on the on the on the truck. You can have crock pots, air fryers, microwaves, the refrigerator. So you can do so many different things in that tractor to where you can have a lot of home cooked meals. Their newer Peter belts are equipped with uh, refrigerators, a mini tiny main microscopic freezer and a uh, microwave. Now I do have a question. Do you guys happen to know most truck what most trucking companies consider will okay as a passenger once you've passed your 90 day probationary period? Like yeah. how old they got to be? Uh, it, well, there's some. Most of them are going to be 13 or believe it or not, I've I've met so many companies where the riders 13 and up or 18 and up. And there are a few that are five and up. I've seen them, Ruthann, where, you know, they're five and up and don't really care. So, but, you know, again, you, you're just going to have to check with each individual company. I, I believe um, their insurance company gives them a certain rate to keep certain ages up. And, you know, it's really going to be up to the up to the company for that one. But I was going to ask Ruthann, what, do you, what, what kind of truck do you think she likes? She likes a KW. Oh, you think it's KW? Yeah, yeah she's a KW. <laughs> no, she's a I want one. I yeah, that's want. her horn. She's a Peterbilt girl. No, that's her horn. Ruthann, everything no, no, she's mentioning, she's every saying Peterbilt. Single, every single camera, I'm like, oh, that looks nice. Though I do have to admit, the newer Peterbilts, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll switch to Peterbilt. There we go. All right, well, listen, we're going to wrap this up, girl. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? And like I said, write that number down that we called you on. That's actually my cell, and you can uh, put put me in your contacts. And, I'm going to uh, put you in my contacts as Troy Trucker. You can put me in there as Troy whatever. <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll text you Ruth Ann's number also. Awesome. So. And I'll definitely call you guys once I know, well, once I pass my DOT physical and pass my... Uh, Permit? CDL written test. Then I'll call you guys and hopefully I'll have a date of when I'm going down to Missouri and then I'll keep you guys posted throughout the time. That'd be awesome. You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. You'll be fine. I promise you. We know a lot of we know a lot of lady truckers that are awesome. So you'll be. I didn't fine. even study for half of my stuff and I I still got all of my Ruth, endorsements. Was a, she was a good trucker. <laughs> do we have a word of the day? I do. Oh wow. You she, want it she now? She really does follow the podcast. Let's hear right, it. Let me, let me, I have to adjust my mic here. I found, well, hold on. Before you say the word of the day, I found your podcast when I worked for Amazon for a week. I, I hated that job. I was really <laughs> bored. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, right? Best, best, best find ever. <laughs> well, here's the word of the day. Venison. Venison? Venison. Like? Like venison, but with a B. Benison, B E N I S O N. Benison. It's old French in the 14th century. Really? So let's do we do we get to guess what it's what it is? Guess. Be- Benison. 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 Does it have to do with a deer? No. 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 I'm not even gonna add guess. What is it? What is it? it? It threw me. I I never even would have thought of it. Let's hear it. A blessing. A blessing. Wow, that's pretty cool. Sharon came home to see missing her train. As a benison in disguise. That's something. I never heard that word before. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and again, I like to plug them. It, this is from Word Genius. See, mm-hmm. any of you guys out there are, are feeling maybe a little stupid, 
Okay, these people can make you smarter. Ruth Ann is a great example. She's now a smart lady. <laughs> She's been hearing Word Genius for how long now? You've been plugging them. They're not a sponsor of the show, but we definitely are a big fan of Word Genius. Check out Word Genius, and they will send you the word of the day every day for the rest of your life. I'm actually scrolling all the way down because I save everyone. All right, right awesome. Now. Well, listen, Eugenia, we truly appreciate you coming on the show. We didn't think you'd be on this long, but you've, you've just hit the 45 minute mark so that's cool so what Ruth Ann what we're going to do is we're going to do another podcast because all the stuff we have for what we were going to talk about today is probably another hour and I don't want to have a two hour podcast so July of 2019 July of 2019 is when I started getting my word of the day wow good for you all right well perfect Eugenia thanks for coming on the show stay in touch and we will talk with you soon okay we're going to let you go And uh, stay safe out there and uh, keep the heart of the trucker going. I will. All right, honey. Have a good night, guys. You see, also have. See ya. Be safe. All right. All right, Ruthann, that was Miss Eugenia. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. She was um, kind of fun. Fun little gal. Hopefully, she'll make a great trucker. Ruthann, I think we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.